Hi, welcome to another edition of DBS View. There were two great rotations evident from last year. The rotation from bonds to equities and the rotation from emerging markets to developed markets. These great rotations are likely to continue, notwithstanding the disruptions to trades in the first quarter of this year. Softer than expected US economic data in the early months of the year did a number of things. It reversed the flows out of bonds into equities, cast doubts on the pace of the Federal Reserve's tapering of its quantitative easing program, pushed down the 10-year US Treasury yield, pushed the US dollar sideways against major currencies, and it offered emerging market equities and currencies a breather from selling pressures. But the softness in US data over recent months may have, uh, to a large extent, been due to severe weather conditions. Leading economic indicators suggest the US economy is likely to grow stronger this year compared to 2013. Consequently, the US Federal Reserve should continue with the current pace of the tapering of its QE program, and the 10-year US Treasury yield should continue to trade higher over coming months, with consequences for almost all asset classes globally. US equities. Well, US equities have been rallying strongly since October of 2011, with only shallow corrections. A significant correction is always possible against technically overbought conditions. But the US economy and corporate earnings continue to grow amidst a low inflation environment. Equity valuations, while no longer cheap, are not frothy either, not yet anyway. Meanwhile, US rates are likely to remain low, helped by a near zero Fed funds policy rate or Fed policy rate well through to the second half of 2015. We remain overweight US stocks. Europe. European equities have demonstrated the same resilience as US equities, with a series of higher highs and higher lows since mid-2012. Although price-to-earnings valuations look cyclically high, the price-to-book for European stocks for European equities is still at a 30% discount to that for their US peers. European corporate profitability, which typically tracks that in the US, has been lagging over the past two years. With the end of the recession, European corporate profit margins should catch up with those in the US. We similarly remain overweight European equities. Over to Japan. Now, you wouldn't have thought so given all the bad publicity it has suffered over recent months, but the Japanese economy actually strengthened over the course of much of 2013. Nevertheless, the Japanese stock market faces headwinds over coming months. The hike in the country's VAT, or the value-added tax, will almost certainly drag down growth. Mind you, it may only be one-off. But nevertheless, the news flow will likely be negative over the coming quarter. These negative sentiments will likely be reinforced by concerns over the trade deficit. It is not unusual now for export volumes to lag devaluation of a currency. This is the so-called J-curve. But nevertheless, the market will grow impatient with the continuing deficit in Japan's trade balance, seeing this as a failure of Abenomics. We think this conclusion is premature. But nevertheless, what concerns us near term is that the market is awaiting more monetary stimulus from the Bank of Japan to further weaken the yen. Now, this will come. But whilst the markets wait, dollar-yen could weaken further, taking the Nikkei down along with it. So we downgrade Japan, Japanese equities, from three months overweight to three months neutral. We will maintain our 12 months overweight view, though, on the expectation that the Bank of Japan will further expand the country's monetary base, further weakening the yen and strengthening the Nikkei, and that the J-curve will eventually kick in, lifting export volumes. Over to Asia X Japan. Now, the February-March reprieve for Asia X Japan, emerging market equities and currencies is probably unsustainable. There remains a significant risk of a pullback in prices in second quarter of this year if U.S. Treasury yields push back up again, as we expect they will. Further, concerns over a softening of growth in China will likely continue to weigh on China-related trades in coming months. This could also spill over into other Asian markets and emerging markets in general. We are underweight Asia X Japan equities on a three-month view. But we are mindful also that valuations in Asia X Japan equities, particularly Hong Kong and Chinese stocks, have reached cyclical lows, cyclical extremes. 
So we are, we are alert to buying opportunities on weakness with a 12-month overweight view. That's for equities. Bonds. Well, the bond market's few months in the sun are similarly unlikely to last. U.S. yields have been depressed over the years to unsustainably low levels as a result of yield hunger, systemic risk, and central bank intervention. There, there may be bouts of risk aversion which may temporarily lower yields, but the bigger trend is for yields rates to rise. In emerging markets, an easing of fear of a financial crisis tightens spreads in Asian and emerging market credits in February and a little bit of March as well. But with the likelihood of stronger economic data coming out from the US, markets could see renewed spread widening in coming months. We remain underweight bonds. Commodities. Well, commodities will be hard pressed to repeat the strong performance of the first quarter. Over coming months, the recent gains in commodities, which we saw as driven by a weaker dollar, adverse weather conditions and speculative activity, they do not appear sustainable. Crude oil prices are likely to be kept by the passing of the bitterly cold winter, and there is still the possibility, although, although highly uncertain, of a gradual return of production, of crude oil production from Libya, Iraq, and yes, even Iran. For metals, the downside risk is that Beijing continues to prioritize structural reforms, the environment, and dealing with the threat of the credit, a bubble over the economic cycle. The most likely outcome is even slower credit growth, slower fixed asset investment growth, and consequently, slower economic growth. Meanwhile, the surge in gold prices appears, appears over. As economic growth strengthens in the U.S. pushing up government bond yields and the U.S. dollar, gold will likely weaken even further or weaken anew over coming months. So we remain neutral on commodities in general and we remain underweight gold. That's a wrap for another edition of the DBS View. We thank you for joining us.